Alright folks, well welcome to the channel. Chuck's the cooking that is. And at any rate, uh, tonight we are going to be making a two-part video. In other words, it's going to be a part one, but it's going to be a standalone video unto itself. And then what we're going to make here in just a minute is going to be used to carry on into our second part. And if you remember a couple, a few weeks ago, I made a video which was dedicated to my son, Chase. Well, I also have a daughter, and I need to dedicate a video to her as well. And she just turned 18 uh, about a month or a month and a half ago. And so, Brianna, this one's for you. And tonight we are making the first part, which is going to be macaroni and cheese. Homemade macaroni and cheese from scratch. So we're going to get turned around here in just a minute, and we're going to get to work on it. So turn around and let's go. <laughs> Alright folks, so virtually everything we are doing tonight is going to take place over here at the stove, at least for the mac and cheese. And over here on my right I have a, about two quarts of water, which I need to bring to a boil for my macaroni. And I've got a tablespoon of salt here, and we're going to add into that water, and we're going to let that go until it begins to boil. Now here in this pot, we are going to take our three tablespoons of butter, adjust our heat down to, uh, I'm going to say, medium. Put our butter in there, and we need to melt that butter. Now you kind of want to keep your butter moving in here. We want to melt it. We're not interested in browning our butter or anything like that. Just keep it moving, and it will get melted. And the next thing we're going to do, we are going to be making a roux. And if you've watched my videos on how to make a gravy, this is going to start looking very similar to you. Because we are going to make a bechamel, and it starts with a roux. We're going to stir this flour that we just put in here. That we want equal parts. We use three tablespoons of butter. We're using three tablespoons of flour. We want to cook this just for a minute. We're not interested in getting our dark brown or anything like that to our flour, but we do want to cook it long enough to just kind of get the raw flour flavor texture out of it. So just a minute or so on the heat. Okay, I think that will do. Now we've got our four cups of milk we're going to come in here with. I'm going to pour probably about a third of that in there. And we just kind of want to mix it in. Make sure we get any lumps out of it right now. We want to go ahead and heat this up to a uh, you know good simmer. I'm going to boost my heat up now that I put that milk in there. So I'm going to say a uh, high medium. And you can see it's beginning to thicken. Now we're going to go ahead and put some more milk in. About another third of this. I 
again. We want to stir it in good. Moments later. Now I'm going to go ahead and add, I'm going to add about a teaspoon of salt to this because our milk is not seasoned. Our flour was not seasoned. Now, again, you can already start to tell that we're getting near to a boil here. And it's beginning to thicken. You do you want to stir this frequently because we are dealing with milk and we don't want to scorch it. That teaspoon of salt was in addition to my ingredients list that I showed you initially. Okay, we are back to a boil here now on this bechamel we got going. I'm going to put the remainder of my milk in now. That's four cups all together. And back to a boil we will come. More moments later. Okay, our water for our macaroni has about come to a boil now. And I'm going to put this in here and it's going to go in for about eight minutes. At eight minutes I will test it for doneness. Give it a stir real quick to make sure it's not sticking to itself. Set my timer for eight minutes. Now then that was two cups of macaroni we put in there. That should yield about four cups of cooked macaroni. And we may end up with too much of our bechamel sauce here for the macaroni, but we'll just play that as we go along here. All right, our milk, or our bechamel, has come to a boil now. So we want to begin adding cheese, like one handful at a time here. And let that melt in. See how nice and thick that's getting? We've almost got all our cheese in now. I'll turn my heat off. We've got enough heat in there to melt the remainder of our cheese that we just added. And here in a couple minutes it's going to be time to take our macaroni over. See how that sauce is looking? Very nice. I'm going to taste that. See how we... Oh, I'm going to take that back. We got our spices to add in here. That was an eighth inch of... Or eighth inch. Eighth of a teaspoon. <laughs> I'm not Meg. An eighth inch, or eighth, <laughs> dang on, eighth of a teaspoon, teaspoon of ground cayenne pepper. Kind of wants to stick to my bowl for some reason. There we go. Pretty well got it all out. I'm going to stir that in there. And also, before I taste it, I'm going to give it a good crack of black pepper. I love black pepper in my macaroni and cheese. Now I'll give that a taste. Mm. There goes our beeper for our macaroni. I need to test it. See if we're done. I'm going to add one more teaspoon of salt. Always remember, you can add more, but you can't take it out. And cheese has salt in it. So you always want to be careful when you're adding things that have salt already in them. Very good. That is a great cheese sauce right there. I don't know if I told you or not. That was Cheddar Jack cheese that we put in there. So I'm going to move my noodles back into the pan here. And I'm going to begin moving cheese sauce into my noodles. And 
by the way, the uh, cayenne pepper did not make this spicy at all. I go one more because I like my I like it cheesy that's the reason why I made this for my daughter she kind of takes after me and is a cheeseaholic like myself now then, if you wanted to bake your macaroni and cheese I would have cut this the noodle cooking off but maybe five minutes rather than eight minutes. Put it into a casserole dish and I would have that. There you go. Maybe you can see a little better now our consistency. Doesn't that look great? I think I might put a little more black pepper in there yet. because I do love my black pepper. So look at that. Okay. I'm just going to put a little on here because this is part one of two and it's time to taste this as macaroni and cheese before we use it for our next purpose. Alright folks, well you saw how easy it was to make this macaroni and cheese. And it probably took about 20 minutes max. Alright, that looks beautiful. Beautifully cheesy, nice and smooth cheese. Creamy is what I'm trying to tell you. Mm. That's great. Now you saw how much cheese sauce we had left over. If you doubled your amount of macaroni and cheese, and used four cups rather than the two cups I used, I think you would uh, probably be able to use up all that cheese sauce. The thing is, what I'm getting ready to make next, while the macaroni is going to be a central player, it's not going to be the central player. There's going to be more added to it here. And I don't need probably eight cups of macaroni and cheese to make it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, what we are going to make, since I have kind of segued into it, I'm going to make macaroni and cheese, or I'm going to make taco macaroni and cheese here in a minute. So, part two is going to be making the taco to go with the macaroni on top of the macaroni and cheese. Folks, do me a favor. If you like what you're seeing down here in the bottom right hand corner, hit like and subscribe. And stay tuned, there's always more to come. And thanks for watching, it's greatly appreciated.